Hi, I'm Ben Hanawal, Product Specialist here at Atlas Copco, and today we're going to be talking about the Power Focus 6000. Let's take a look down in the software. Today we're going to be talking about the Power Focus 6000. This is going to be the virtual station menu. So if we're in our software and you follow along on the screen, if you click into the virtual station menu, we're going to go through the settings and make sure that everybody understands exactly what needs to be programmed in here. Now the best way to describe the virtual station settings are in the rest of our videos and the rest of our trainings we've talked about tightening programs and sources, configurations, and specific settings of the controller itself. The virtual station tab is where all of those settings come together to create different virtual stations for different applications. As everybody may or may not know, the PowerFocus 6000 can support up to six tools on six separate virtual stations, so we can uniquely program each of these individual virtual stations. So let's go in and let's take a look at it. Let's see you know, some of the different settings that we can set in here. First one being the name. This can be up to 32 characters. Some people like to name these just virtual station numbers. Others like to name them the job that they're on, whatever it may be. So the virtual station name, that's an important one. Please remember, if you do change the name and you don't label it with a number of the virtual station, it's going to be hard for you to understand, looking at them alphabetically, which one is the first versus the second versus the third. So do keep that in mind when it, uh, you do name your virtual stations. All right, the next tab down is going to be our Licenses tab. Now this is a new introduction after the 3.0 software. So with the introduction of the flexible offering model, we have the ability to have different types of virtual stations to support different levels of tools. This adds additional value to our customers being able to run many, many different types of tools all on the same controller using different functionalities associated with the different virtual station types. Now, for this example, I only have one virtual station type because I'm only using one tool on this controller, so keep that in mind. If you do have additional features that are specific to a virtual station, this is where they would show up. Some examples of that might be yield control or open protocol extension for mid-2500, things like that. This is where the Features button, so if you clicked in here, you would be able to assign those. The next tab down we have is going to be our Tool tab. So, when we pair up a tool to the PowerFocus 6000, they all go into this bank. Clearly, you can see I only have one tool paired, but it's going to give us the basic information. It's going to give us the virtual station it's assigned to, max torque, different max torques based on the tightening programs, and what type of tool it is. So in this example, you can see we have the serial number of the tool and we also have the MAC address of the tool. So that's what will show up on the wireless network if it's showing up on a wireless network. Right below that, we have our tool configuration. So if you click on here, we only have one tool configuration for this type of tool. But if I was to turn off the filter by tool type, you'd notice we have all of our different configurations that can be used with different tool types. So this is really important. Remember to use a correct tool configuration with the correct type of tool that you're using. It'll avoid a lot of confusion down the road. Next tab down, we're going to have our task. This is one of the most important pieces of the PowerFocus 6000. This is telling this tool what to do. So if you click in to choose task, we have a couple of options. We can select a tightening program. So if I was to select a tightening program, I can just run this tightening program all day long. If I wanted to select from a field bus, we would go over to our sources menu and we would select field bus selection. If I wanted to select a tightening program over open protocol, I would select my source that I created in the sources tab. So keep that in mind. The task is going to be telling the tool what exactly it's supposed to do. Next tab down, we have manual mode. This is essentially going to be a backup mode that you can program. Manual mode needs to be triggered in some way and really the use case for this is if we have an assembly line or a customer who's using the tools and some PLC goes down or they want to calibrate at lunch or whatever it may be, what we're going to do is we're going to assign a secondary task. So what are we going to do if the line goes down? And then we actually have to trigger it. So 
You can trigger it through a key switch, you can trigger it over a field bus, but manual mode is kind of a niche item. It's not used by every customer and it does not need to be programmed or used. But just keep in mind that it does exist on the Power Focus 6000. Next tab down, we have protocols. Now, if you have a specific customer protocol, it will show up in here. So if it's a specific created protocol for that customer, it would show up in here. For every other customer, you're going to see exactly what I see here, which is open protocol. Open protocol is pretty simple. You basically just turn it on. There's a couple of different settings in here. Server port, that's an important one. So a lot of people ask me, Ben, how do we differentiate if we have six tools on the controller? How does Open Protocol know which tool it's talking to? And that's where the port number would come into play. Um, and make sure that you have a unique port number for each tool. So for the first tool, you could use 4545. Then for the second tool, you could use 4546 and so on down the line. We have the ability for Open Protocol to send soft PLC indexes, meaning just generic I.O. points to the soft PLC. We actually have a separate video talking about the soft PLC. Disconnect settings. So this is actually going to be if we lose connection to Open Protocol, what do we want the tool to do? We actually have the ability to lock out the tool, which is a really nice feature on the PowerFocus 6000 using the legacy counter. So this is actually when using uh, job counting over open protocol, there was a specific way that jobs used to increment themselves on a PowerFocus 4000. And if you wanna mirror the behavior of the PowerFocus 4000 when using jobs over open protocol, this is what you would turn on. And then the final tab is actually just for mid 2500. And then if you make any changes, just hit the apply button and that's all there is to it. All right, the next tab down, we have our accessories. So since we can have six different virtual stations and a bunch of different accessories paired up to the controller, this is the tab where we can go through and we can check all of those different configurations we created in the configurations tab. By default, I don't have any accessories connected right now, but there is one that's always connected and that would be the internal IO. So when connecting an accessory, you can actually click on the configuration you wanna use and you can see the little puzzle pieces. So you're just gonna match them up and then you're gonna click on the connected accessory and then it will assign that accessory. So now if I back out, you're gonna see I have that accessory assigned to this virtual station. Now, very common question. Ben, how do I toggle inputs and outputs or force on inputs and outputs? That's a great question. If you come into this internal IO tab, you can go to info, click on this little drop down, and go to diagnostic. From here, I actually have the ability to monitor inputs and outputs, and I can also go to force mode and I can force on PSET select bits. So I can select input one or input two. I can also force inputs and outputs. So keep that in mind. All right, next tab down, we have our field bus tab. So if we are using a field bus and it's assigned to the virtual station, this has to be done in Tools Talk 2. And there's actually a separate video talking about exactly how to do that. If it is assigned, you can go in here and you can go to info. From here, you can actually view in monitor and force mode the different variables on the field bus configuration. So that's a pretty nice feature to have. On previous generations of controllers, you could never monitor the field bus inputs and outputs without additional software. So that's a nice feature on the PowerFocus 6000 as well. And our final tab is going to be our general virtual station settings. So if we click in here, we only have one option. We actually talk more about the general virtual station configurations in the configurations portion of the product essentials videos. So that's all there is on the virtual station menus. There's quite a bit to cover, but like I said, this is probably the most important portion of the PowerFocus 6000 software. Now keep in mind, if you wanted to add additional virtual stations, you hit the plus button and we can come in here and program different tools with different configurations and set up a completely unique settings for each individual tool that we have connected to the PowerFocus 6000. So I hope that this has been helpful for you. If you do have any additional questions, please feel free to contact your Atlas Copco marketing team and we can try and get you some answers. <music>